Welcome to Illuminati Silver, we tell you the truth about silver. Today is Saturday the 9th of April 2022 and we're publishing our gold and silver weekly update for the week ending the 8th of April. Now looking at precious metals we can see that gold rose $22 last week rising from $1,925 to $1,947. Having hit a high of $1,948 so it basically closed just a dollar off its week's high and a low of 1,916. Now that represents a rise of 1.2%. Now in sterling terms, it finished the week at 1496, just four pounds short of 1,500 pounds. And that's 28 pounds up. And in euros, it closed at 1,790 euros and that's up 48 euros. Now looking at silver, it didn't perform quite as well. We can see that it rose 14 cents, rising from 24.65 to 24.79, having been as high as 24.95 and as low as 24.14. So a rise of just 0.14%. Now in sterling terms, it closed at just above the 19 pounds a level at 19.04, that's up 23 pence. And in euros, it closed at 22.80 euros and that's up 0.48 euros or almost half a euro. The gold to silver ratio obviously therefore rose from 78 to 1 to 78.5 to 1. It does certainly appear at the moment at least that the gold to silver ratio seems comfortable in that sort of mid to upper 70 range. Bitcoin fell $3,910 and currently stands at 42000 $472, though obviously cryptocurrencies are a 24-hour, seven-day week market and these prices change literally from minute to minute. Looking at equities, the Dow Jones closed on Friday at 34,721. That's up 137 points on the day, that's on Friday, but down 97 on the week. The S&P closed at 4,488 down 12 on the day and down 57 on the week. And the NASDAQ Composite closed at 13,711, down 186 points on the day and down 550 points on the week. We have often said there's a very close correlation between the NASDAQ and cryptocurrencies. And generally speaking, in most cases, whenever the NASDAQ is up, cryptos are up, and NASDAQ is down, cryptos as a whole are down. Now, oil prices vacillated quite a bit this week, but eventually Brent crude closed at $102.78, down $1.61, and WTI crude closed at $98.26, and that's down just over a dollar on the week. The Biden administration has promised Europe that it will cater for much of Europe's energy needs. But whether they can deliver it is another matter or deliver it in time is another matter. The dollar index stands at 99.79 and that's up 1.16 on the week. And it did actually go above 100, which we'll mention in a few moments. Now we concluded last week's video with the following forecast. Quote, we expect to see gold trading between 1875 and 1975 with 1850 to 2000 as outliers. And we see silver trading between 24 and 25, 25 and 23.65 to 25.55 as outliers. Well, gold traded between 1948 at its high and 1916 at its low, with a difference between the two of just $32, which is quite small. But it's meant that gold traded well within our predicted price range. Silver traded between 24.95 and 24.15, a difference of just 81 cents between high and low, and again fitted well within our normal trading range forecast. As we pointed out last week, we weren't expecting, frankly, any great movements in prices unless something happened on the Ukraine-Russian front, as the economic data really was limited, and also, bearing in mind it's still over a month until the next FOMC meeting would have limited impact. If anything, last week was rather lacklustre. And the reason for us only putting out one video during the course of the week, there's not much point producing a video saying nothing has changed. However, we did predict 
in our video we published on Wednesday that the dollar index would move above 100 and it actually touched 100.18 at one stage, a two-year high. Now, economic data last week saw most figures close to expectations, though the initial jobless claims did fall quite sharply. However, this was offset by continuous jobless claims rising slightly. Consumer credit for February was a good bit higher than expectations, $42 billion versus $15 billion. So clearly, people are starting to borrow again on those credit cards and other forms of short-term debt. And wholesale inventories for Feb came in at 2.5% compared with 2.1%. Now, if we take a look at this coming week, certain days are particularly noticeable. On Monday, we have the New York Fed median one- and three-year inflation expectations to March. Interesting. I doubt it's going to be earth-shattering, but interesting. But more relevant, on Tuesday, we have the Consumer Price Index and Core CPI for March. And we have the Federal Budget Deficit for March. Wednesday, the Producer Price Index final demand for March. And then on Thursday, weekly jobless claims and notice noticeable the retail sales for March, as well as import price index. And then on Friday, we have the Empire State Manufacturing Index for April, industrial production and capacity utilisation both for March. So, CPI on Tuesday, producer price index on Wednesday, and retail sales on Thursday are the three core figures to watch. As we stated in last week's update, as the FOMC will not be meeting until May, most of the economic data is not really going to affect markets, particularly until closer to that meeting. To some extent, analysts are using the data to consolidate in their minds their expectations of interest rate rises and Fed balance sheet reductions, which is why comments made by various Fed governors have perhaps had a more proportionate impact. Now, having said that, almost a caveat immediately, the CPI figures could have an impact, especially if we see CPI move above 8.4% and dramatically above it, as this will persuade traders that the Fed will have to be even more aggressive than some of the Fed governors have been expressing in the last week or so, and they have been very aggressive. We can see, with the dollar index moving to 100 and above, that dealers and traders are expecting a further rise in the greenback, which will undoubtedly be brought on by rising interest rates. Now, attention is still focused on Russia and Ukraine. Plus, of course, any further restrictions on global trade and energy prices, and geopolitical uncertainty that this incursion is causing. So going back to gold and silver, how do they look from a technical analyst's point of view? Well, for gold, we have short-term resistance at 1944. That's $1,944, which represents March's high, followed by 1967, 2000, a high psychological figure, and significant resistance at 2016. We have support at the 10-day moving average of $1,929, and then really 1900 below that. Silver has support at 2360 and resistance at 26. So quite a large margin, really. The fast stochastic and MACD are pointing to lower prices. But that said, frankly, we see the downside is limited until the geopolitical situation eases. And so why do we say that? Well, we have, admittedly, the headwind pressure of a two-year high dollar, but we also have the tailwind pressure of increasing inflation. And with equity markets also not performing that well, it's going to cause some monies to move back into precious metals. So with all this in mind, we can sum up by saying that we expect to see gold trading between $1,900 and $2,000, with 1850 and 2025 as outliers. We doubt very much it will go down to 1850, but who knows if there is a solution in Russia and Ukraine, then that may at least temporarily have a dip or cause a dip for the price of gold. We see silver trading between 24 and 25.25 with 23.60 and 25.90 
as outliers. What do you think? Please do share your thoughts. Meanwhile, thank you so much for listening. If you haven't done so, please subscribe to our channel. There will be more videos coming out as more economic news perhaps forces the issue. And don't forget to press the bell sign so you're notified of our videos as and when they're published. And finally, we wish you a safe, enjoyable weekend and a most prosperous week ahead. Illuminati silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners. Thank you.